Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be going over the attributes module within Shiva. Um, as I thought about what to prepare for this particular video, I again thought through my head, I want to keep this really simple. Um, so we're just going to be doing brief overviews. I'm going to try and stick to that. Uh, there's going to be quite a lot more detail as we go into the specifics as I'm making my game. I just want to get to give people a feel uh, for uh, how these things work. Uh, when I was getting ready for this, I was putting models in. I was doing all kinds of stuff. It was just getting overboard. So hope you bear with me. Um, I am excited to get to the actual game development part. Um, but I think that we should touch on some of these basics first. It'll lay a good foundation, and then we'll be able to move forward. Um, plus, it helps me because as I talk about it more with you guys, then it helps me to understand a little bit better. And so I think it's going to help us all out in the end. So today we're going to be talking about the attributes model or the attributes edi editor module. Um, I always bring it up in this this uh, corner of the screen, the top left, when I'm in the general view, because you can, uh, you know, open up your assets in the scene viewer and then have access to the attributes editor. And I'll show you in a second um, how that works. Let's get a uh, a model in here that we can work with. So I'm just going to right click on models within the data explorer. As you remember when we went over this, this is what um, where we can manage our assets. And I'm just going to create a basic shape. We'll just call it a, uh, we'll just have a sphere. It's a sphere, so we'll just call it a ball. Um, we'll just leave everything basic. Well, let's let's check this out. Let's maybe make the radius 3. The 3 uh, refers to the units within Shiva, which is that grid. Um, and so we'll just make it 3 units large. I believe from the documentation that they said each unit can be considered you know, like a meter. So if you're doing like the physics, um, you kind of want to keep everything to scale so that the physics works a little bit better. At least that's what I'm told. I haven't really played around with it. Okay, so create. Name is already used because I've used this before within uh, doing the creation of this video. Double click on the ball. It's going to open up in the scene viewer. This is just showing us the actual model. It's not actually a scene, but... The uh, scene viewer is kind of multi-purpose that way. All right. So to get our attributes editor up, we make sure that we have clicked on the little blue circle with uh, it kind of looks like a white eye. If it's not up, you can click on the square and actually go to the attributes editor. You'll notice that there's nothing in here right now. That's because we haven't selected our model within the scene. So we select it. You'll see that there's a wireframe that kind of highlights that it is being selected. Um, and so we have some basic uh, attributes over on the side. Now these tabs, these little highlighted areas, you know, common attributes, shape attributes, um, your model and other things you're going to be using could have several different tabs um, to work with. So that's kind of one of the first basics about the attribute editor is that you have these different uh, rollouts here where you can switch back and forth between the different aspects. So some of the common attributes most models are going to have is like a name, model name, you know, the type, it's a shape, okay, it doesn't have a parent, um, you know, translation, rotation, and scale, all this stuff. Um, TRS flags, what they call it, translation, translation, rotational, and scaling flags. So as you can see, it's kind of like if this was parented to an object, you could say whether or not it's going to scale with the parent or move with the parent. Um, bounding box, this is basically... Uh, you know, uh, a square that encompasses the entire object. Uh, if we go to the display and this in the scene view and we turn on bounding volumes, you can see that the um, bounding box is this light blue box. Um, and so, like, the minimum is one corner and the maximum is the opposite corner that kind of defines that square. Uh, visibility and activation, so some simple stuff, you know, whether or not the thing is visible. Um, we have the ability to set visibility distances so that things fade out as they get into the distance to kind of save on processing power. And there's a whole lot of other options, vis you know, the, the different kinds of visibility or whether or not the AI that's assigned to the object is active when it's, you know, not visible or different things like that. Um, 
shape attributes, you know, just some basic stuff, how many faces, how many vertices, um, the material on the object. Um, so you kind of get the feel for it. The attribute editor is just everything that has to do with that shape, which includes even, you know, at the top we have these menus. These are places where we can actually assign other uh, other attributes to this model that are not currently there. So we can actually take the sphere and turn it into a camera or make it a light or apply special effects like particle emitters and polygon trails or you know if we're going to be doing some collision detection for instance here we go we just boom we click that and it's now a collider. Um, you know and then so it adds a collider tab. Now colliders don't have any attributes to tab but you know we could easily um, we could turn on, let's say we wanted to, well, if we wanted to do dynamics, we can't have it as a collider. So we remove the collider and where is it? I don't see it at the moment. Oh, you know, controllers, that's why. So under controllers, we can add artificial intelligence, which is kind of the scripting that, that you know, that the object can use different animations we can uh, if we add a controller this is um, you know the tab that handles all the physics so that's basically it you know it's um, it's kind of there just to enable you to change all the attributes I mean that's you know pretty much what the, the name is what it does change the attributes of an, of an object and so um, you know if we have a, a scene like we have here then uh, you know the attributes we're going to show up if I click on this. It's showing me everything for that particular model. If I click on that, it shows different tabs for that. Uh, the ground just has some basic stuff. So it's just a place for you to get in and tweak things, and uh, it comes in handy. I like to keep it open when I'm doing my scene. Anyways, that's about all there is to cover on the attributes editor. Like I said before, we're going to be covering some all the details on how some of these different uh, things affect particular objects we put into our scene. Um, it, there's just way too much to go over. I mean, if we were to put, you know, a light into the scene and then, uh, you know, there's light attributes and there's all kinds of stuff. So we'll handle all this in more detail as we go along. Uh, but that's it for now, and we will see you next time. Thanks.